That was a clip from yesterday morning. That clip that you just saw of me holding up the phone there. Our old familiar friend, the wee hours of the morning. That was just after a session from two nights ago into yesterday morning. It's now Saturday, Super Bowl weekend Saturday. I guess my Super Bowl weekend uh, started off a couple days ago, Thursday. It's all very confusing because, you know, these poker sessions, you play at nighttime, you finish in the daytime, forget what day you started, what day you ended. And I, one thing I do know, it is currently Saturday, and that session two days ago didn't go that well. An example of things not going so well, perhaps. 5'10 at the Bellagio, the straddle is on. There's something like three limpers into the pot. I look down at ace seven of diamonds in the small blinds, and I decide to take a non-conventional route and raise it up here. If I'm only raising my super premium hands here in the small blind, I'm a little bit unbalanced, and while balance isn't really that important in uh, some lower stakes games, the Bellagio might be a little bit more important since the player pool is a little bit smaller. So I don't think it's that bad of an idea to mix in some hands such as this that play pretty well post-flop. So I go ahead and make it $150. There's a middle position call and the button after thinking for a while calls as well. So three ways to a flop of ace, eight, deuce with two clubs and one diamond. It's a pretty good flop for me. We do flop a pair, but we can also try and fold out some holdings that have some overcards in them that can improve, such as king, queen, king, jack, king, 10, queen, jack, queen, 10. Hands like that that are suited, would call a raise pre-flop, and that can improve on various runouts. So usually happy to fold those out. Plus, we can represent an ace, we can barrel away on some later turns and rivers, and we can improve with some backdoor flush draws. So I go ahead and put a bet here of $320. Both players make the call, so pot is getting pretty sizable. Turns the five of diamonds, which brings us that backdoor flush draw. My stack isn't really too big relative to the size of the pot here. I think I should be able to fold out some weaker aces that did not raise in a straddled pot, just limped in from middle position and from the button. You would think that a stronger ace, such as ace king, ace queen, ace jack, might put in a raise pre flop. So I think I should be able to fold out those top pair holdings, also shut down any club draws. And seeing, seeing as how I only have about 1100 in my stack, it sort of makes sense if I happen to have an ace-king type hand just to shut down all those club draws and take down a pretty decent pot here. So even though I only have a pair of eights here with some showdown value, I don't think I'm winning here too often versus two players who call here. So I decided to jam all in there, try and maximize my fold equity and still have a backup plan with the two pair draws, trip draws, and flush draws. Middle position player folds right away. Unfortunately, the button does not fold right away. He thinks for a long time, but he eventually decides on a call. Off to the river, probably looking for some improvement here, but unfortunately it doesn't come. I show my hand and he shows us ace-queen off suit. So I guess a little bit surprised there that uh, my opponent did not put in the raise pre-flop on the button, facing all those limpers. And uh, I do have a lot of history with this player, so he's known to do maybe some unconventional things from time to time, but I still would have expected to raise their pre-flop. So it was a long session, some ups and downs, but uh, more downs than ups. Finished the night, stuck about $1,500. Not the ideal situation for uh, heading into a big weekend, such as Super Bowl weekend. Speaking of Super Bowl weekend, I guess I've sort of had like somewhat of a change of heart recently about how I approach these big weekends here in Las Vegas. This is definitely one of the biggest weekends. In fact, it's so big that I'm not at my usual spots, which I guess would be the Bellagio, the Aria, and the Wynn. Currently standing out here at the Mirage. Lists are very long at the uh, aforementioned places, but in previous years, I used to get so, uh, such a big sense of FOMO with these weekends and uh, put a lot of maybe undue pressure on uh, really performing these weekends. It sort of occurred to me that there's always something going on somewhere when it comes to poker. There's always a tournament series happening somewhere. There's always action to be found somewhere. Hoping for that really big score on Super Bowl Saturday. Sure, it'd be nice, but you can't really force these things and you're sort of at the mercy of short-term variance. So 
The odds should be slightly more in your favor since more people in town means better games, which means more likelihood of putting up a good win. Those factors aren't really gonna save you from uh, running bad slash playing bad. And uh, I might've gotten a little too adventurous there with the eight, seven diamonds. Maybe slightly unnecessary and uh, maybe indicative of me trying to push things a little bit too hard over these big weekends. So after thinking about it, just gonna play my game. Back to the grind. Let's get at it. We're here at the Mirage. There's a 510 game going and there's a couple two fives. So I'm gonna check out the 510, see how that is. Move on from there. Let's go. Wrapping it up here at the Mirage. Look who I ran into. We did great today. <laughs> Maybe Brad here can explain what happened because before Brad showed up, I was doing all right. I was winning. I was winning money. Things were good. Feeling good, playing good. And then Brad showed up. The session turning around had very little to do with me because I lost a thousand. At here, I lost a thousand playing with Andrew, and then I lost a thousand uh, right before that, so I'm stuck 2k today. Yeah, Brad brought the run bad, literally. He brought some people over from the Venetian who he said were going to be donating some, some money into the game. Okay, maybe not in those words, but something along those lines. And uh, yeah, they, uh, they took all of our money. They did, they got us. Well, uh, well played, guys from Minnesota. We need to give a shout out to two, was, uh, two Mark and Dave, two idiots, two and a half idiots from uh, Minnesota. Mark and Dave. All they wanted to do was be on the vlog, and uh, they got their wish. They crushed us. <laughs> so yeah, that's that. That's the Mirage. And uh, right now we are going to go over to the Bellagio to try and uh, rectify the issue as best we can. See you there. That's right, we're back. Back here in the old sports book, the place I said we should probably spend less time in. But at least it feels a little bit appropriate being Super Bowl Sunday, and uh, that is today actually, considering the time is 5.14 in the a.m. Speaking of the Super Bowl, apparently there are four million dollar wagers on the Super Bowl this year, all on the Eagles, and apparently one of them is a multi-million dollar bet. Apparently last year there was only one million dollar bet on the Super Bowl. This year there's already four and one of them multi-million. Fun little factoid there for you here on Super Bowl Sunday. Anyway, just need to uh, run through some hands here and uh, call it a day. You guys will know whether those uh, Super Bowl bets are actually winning bets or losing bets by the time you're watching this probably. But yeah, let's run it back to the Mirage and discuss a couple hands from that part of the evening, that session, so to speak. Interesting hand here develops when the middle position player opens for $15. I look down at ace, deuce of clubs, I make the call. $15, certainly a reasonable price. I think you could probably maybe consider a three bet here, but flat certainly seems okay to me. Folds over to the small blind who puts in a three bet. It makes it $50 to go. Folds back over to me. Happy to uh, make a call here versus this player in particular. He's been uh, giving a lot of action and playing a lot of hands. So definitely playing this hand versus this player, uh, somewhere around $1,000 effective in position. Love comes queen seven deuce with two spades. He puts out a C bet of $50. It's hard to make a pair, so I go ahead and make the call. Turns it off to nine. This time he bets $100. In a normal situation, normal circumstances, on paper, this is a fold, decent amount of the time, but uh, not ready to let it go just yet. I toss in the $100, make the call. 
off to a river card. River brings in the front door flush. It's the four spades. This time my opponent checks. I don't think I need to turn it into a bluff in this spot. I think my showdown value is higher than average here with a pair of deuces. So I just go ahead and check it back. And uh, sure enough, my opponent rolls over ace jack off suit. So we off flop him in this situation and uh, able to hold on with the bottom pair there. I might call. I might call. Unfortunately, going forward, things took a turn for the worse. In this hand, I opened up with the pocket fours and put out a C bet on King 8 8 versus two players. Get called in both spots, and uh, that's not going to work out too well. There was another hand that uh, was very important in the session, and I failed to capture it. So, it's been a little while since we've had a, uh, a hand that I need to report where the failure to capture is completely on me. So you know what that means, $25 to charity. But we need to report this one because uh, like I said, very important and I think the biggest hand of the session that I played. So in this hand I opened up king 10 of spades from early position to 20. The player on my direct left puts in a three bet and he makes it $60. Seated Broadway, I'm uh, pretty happy to call three bets with. So I go ahead and make the call and we're off to a flop heads up. Flop comes queen 10 seven with two hearts. So we flop middle pair here. I check it to my opponent and he puts out a bet of $40. Down bets the flop and uh, never folding in this spot. So I go ahead and make the call. The turn is a brick and I check it over to him and he bets $110. It's another one of those spots that I think is a little bit player dependent. One of the players that Brad happened to bring over who, uh, let's just say these guys were having a good time from Minnesota enjoying Super Bowl weekend thus far. So that being said, not ready to give it up here on the turn just yet. It seems like a somewhat reasonable price and uh, gonna have to navigate some rivers here, um, but I get a little bit stubborn and I make the call here as well. River, however, looks like a fantastic card for us. River is an offsuit 10, so we make trips on the river. I decided to check it over to him because I think he's either gonna have a lot of bluffs here or he's gonna have some pretty strong hands that he's going to put in uh, a third bet, value bet on the river. Aces, kings, and then a lot of ace-king type hands where he might fire a third barrel here. So after I check it over to him, he does put in a bet and it's pretty sizable. It's $400. So maybe a little bit sketchy because uh, I actually think he could have a, uh, a better hand here, but he could also be putting in that value bet, like I said, with a uh, over pair. So no choice here, never folding. Don't really think there's much point in raising here. That leaves one option left, the usual. I make the call and he shows us pocket queens. So pretty big disaster, disaster of a hand. Uh, and it's a hand that basically crushed my session, my entire session. Um, wasn't able to get any traction. After that, won some hands, lost some hands. The turning point in that hand is the turn. So, like I said, in, norm in a normal situation, uh, especially with me being in early position and the three bet coming on my direct left, I think I should be able to find a fold on the turn there, uh, some decent percentage of the time. Decided to make the call and then uh, led me down a uh, not so favorable path in this instance. Ended up in that game at the Mirage for $2,000. Cash out of the game for somewhere around 1100. Lost about $900 there at the Mirage. So that leads us to the Bellagio, the mainstay, the 510, in for 1500. My second hand that was dealt to me was an interesting one. I straddled up under the gun for my first hand, and then my second hand was this hand. It was the middle position open to 30. The button puts in a three bet to $90. I looked down an ace jack of diamonds in the big blind. If I were in position and already facing a three bet with this hand, I think I would like a flat a little bit more than uh, putting in a four bet bluff here. But seeing as we're out of position, I kind of like a four bet bluff a little bit more. So that's what I do. I make it $250 to go. Middle position, initial razor folds, and the button pretty much snap calls. Doesn't put any thought into it whatsoever. So. We're going heads up to a flop here in a four bet pot. The flop comes jack, five, six with two clubs. So we flop ourselves top pair here. I decide to check it over to the button because I don't know if there's too many hands that, he's, that he can have where he's going to just call it off. 
If he has an underpair to the jack, then I'm not sure if we can get full value here. Anyway, I do decide to check it and my opponent puts out a bet. He makes a bet of $350. Not too much choice here, can't do anything I think other than call. I like a call here. Turn comes in offsuit nine, which I think is mostly insignificant. If my opponent happens to have seven eight here, then uh, that's gonna be pretty unfortunate. And if he has pocket nines, also unfortunate. Once again, I check it over to my opponent, and uh, this time he puts out another bet, and it is another sizable one, $720. And uh, I only have about 900 or so at this point. I bought in for 1500, and this is my second hand. That's gonna leave me about $900 here on the turn. So I feel like I've underwrapped my hand a little bit here. Perhaps my opponent is trying to protect some equity with an underpair, putting me on that ace-king type hand, something of that nature, maybe a worse jack, but tough to uh, just let top pair, top kicker go. Effective stack sizes, not a lot left to play for in a four bet pot. So it's a little bit iffy to say the least, but I'm just gonna go with it. I stick the $900 in there. My opponent shrugs and calls at this point because it's hardly a raise. River comes a brick, I go ahead and show, and my opponent shows pocket tens. So some good news. We managed to get the maximum here uh, versus the underpair. That's a much needed uh, full double up after somewhat disaster session of 2-5 at the Mirage. Off to a very good start here, uh, to say the least. My second hand in getting a full double up with the ace jack of diamonds. Some back and forth, uh, lose a couple hands, win one hand, lose a hand, win a couple hands. Poker goes on. And then this next hand, there's three limps. I'm in the small blind looking down at pocket jacks. Raise it up to $60. All three limpers make the call. Four ways to a flop, nine, seven, four, with a flush draw on board. I make a bet of $140. I think I can maybe size up there a little bit more. Not too sure I love my sizing there, but 140 it is. First player folds, and the next two players make the call. Three ways to a turn card, which is the 10 of clubs, bringing in a backdoor flush draw now. I decide to check it, try and see what happens here, sort of evaluate the action, see what these guys do. First player thinks for a little while and checks. The button puts out a bet. He bets $250, never going anywhere with the overpair plus the gutter at this point, so I go ahead and make the call. Middle position player folds. Heads up to a river card, which is a total brick. Off to three. I check it over to the button again, and he thinks for a while, and then he checks it back. Feeling pretty good, I roll over the pocket jacks, and uh, he gives it the nod, and then he turns over 9-3 off suit. Yeah, so I guess it's not so much of a brick on the river. Never saw that one coming, especially after he uh, took a little while to turn his hand over, but pocket jacks, not gonna get it done this time. So we definitely fared better in this 510 Bellagio game than we did in the 2-5 at the Mirage. Got into this game for the usual 1500 didn't need to add on a single dollar cashed out for 31 31 oh something we won like sixteen hundred dollars so at least we uh rectified today's loss end up booking a win today between the two sessions unfortunately it looks like super bowl weekend is going to be an overall loss Kind of disappointing, but not really. Not really that disappointing. It's just another two or three or four, whatever number of days that uh, you put in on the grind here. And what can you do? I don't think I played my best. There's some spots I would like uh, to have back and take a different line a couple different times. But that's pretty much every session that I play at least. And uh, I think that's probably the case for pretty much everybody. It's tough to play a perfect session and uh, sometimes those mistakes end up being bigger than other ones. By the way, is it just me or do my eyes look uh, a little bit sleepy here? Feeling a little bit run down and uh, could use a day off, but on the other hand, I kind of just want to plow forward. And uh, there's some exciting things happening. There's some exciting things coming up. A little bit of an announcement here. You know how I mentioned the poker on five continents goal for the year? That's starting. It's already starting next week, next weekend. Put your guesses in as to where we're going. I will wait as you lock in your guesses. Next weekend, we are going 
to none other than Rosvedov, Czech Republic. That's where, I'll be, that's where I'll be reporting to you guys from, Rosvedov. It's right on the border of Germany and Czech Republic. So there's a party poker event that's going on there. And we're going, we're bringing the vlog, we'll be in Europe. I think I get there on the 9th. There's a big uh, tournament series going on. I'm gonna play a 1K event, 1,000 euros. We're gonna see if we can uh, chip away at this 100K goal for the tournament results. We'll be checking off continent number two next weekend, Rosvedov. I've never been. Have you guys been? Will you be there? 